everyone. How are you today? It's a new day today. How are you feeling? Good, good. I'm doing good too. Um, so today is, yesterday was Wednesday, so that means today is there's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday. So today is Thursday. We're going to move our little arrow over one. Thursday. All right, we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, a 1 and a 4. 1, 10 and 4 ones. 14. It is May 14th, Thursday. 2020. All right, today we have a fun book called Bartholomew and the Oobleck. What in the world is Oobleck? Oh, this book is by Dr. Seuss. So you guys know Dr. Seuss has some fun words. Bartholomew and the Oobleck. They still talk about it in the kingdom of Did, as the year the king got angry with the sky. And they still talk about the page boy, Bartholomew Cubans. If it hadn't been for Bartholomew Cubans, the king in that sky would have been wrecked that little kingdom. If it hadn't been for but the king in that sky would have wrecked that little kingdom. Bartholomew had seen the king get angry many, many times before, but that year, when his majesty started growling at the sky, Bartholomew Cubans just didn't know what to make of it. Yet all that year, the old king did it. All year long, he stared up into the air above the, his kingdom, muttering and sputtering, through his royal whiskers. <sighs> the things that come down from my sky. All spring when the rain came down, he growled at that. All summer when the sunshine came down, he growled at that. So it's like, just not happy. All autumn when the fog came down, he growled at that. And that winter when the snow came, he started shouting, this snow, this fog, this sunshine, this rain, bah, these four things that come down from my sky. But King Derwin Bartholomew tried to calm him. You've always had these same four things come down. That's just the trouble, bellowed the king. Every year, the same four things. I'm mighty tired of those old things. I want something new to come down. Something new come down? Bartholomew gasped. That's impossible. Your majesty, you just can't have it. Boy, don't you dare tell me what I can and cannot have. Remember, Bartholomew, I am the king. I know, sire, said Bartholomew. You rule all the land and you rule all the people. But even kings can't rule the sky. Do you think he'll be able to change it? Can't, eh? His majesty flew into a terrible rage. Well, maybe other kings can't do it. But maybe I'm one king who can. You mark my words, Bartholomew Cubans. I will have something new come down. But how to get something new to come down? That was rather hard to think up. And for many days, the old king stomped around, trying to figure out some way to do it. How can you get something new to come down from the sky? Hmm. Then finally, one night when all the lords and ladies of the palace were asleep, just as the king was buttoning his royal nightshirt, he suddenly stopped. Still, a strange wild light began to shine in his gray-green eyes. Why, of course, he began laughing. <laughs> they can do it for me, 
Bartholomew Cubans, blow my secret whistle. Quick, call my royal magicians. Your magicians, your majesty? Bartholomew shivered. Oh no, your majesty, don't call them. You hold your tongue, Bartholomew Cubans. You do as I command you. Blow my secret whistle. Yes, sire, Bartholomew bowed. But your majesty, I still think that you may be very sorry. So Bartholomew doesn't want the magicians to come. He took the king's secret whistle from its secret hook. He blew a long, low blast down the king's back secret stairway. And a moment later, he heard them coming up from their musty hole beneath the dungeon, up the, in -night, in, up the empty midnight tunnel to the royal bedchamber tower, came the magicians on their padded, shuffled feet. Up and right into the room, they came chanting, Shuffle, duffle, muzzle, muff, fista, wissa, mista, cuff. We are men of groans and bowls, mystic men who eat boiled owls. Tell us what you wish, O king, our magic can do anything. I wish, spoke the king, to have you make something fall from the sky that no other kingdom has ever had before. What can you do? What will you make? For a moment they stood thinking, blinking their creaky eyes. Then they spoke a word, one word, Ooblek. Ooblek? asked the king. What will it look like? Won't look like rain, won't look like snow, won't look like fog, that's all we know. We just can't tell you anymore. We've never made Ooblek before. They bowed, they started toward the door. We must... We go now to our secret cave on Mystic Mountain, Nika Tave. There all night long we'll work for you, and you'll have Ooglek when we're through. They'll do something crazy, whispered Bartholomew. Call them back, your majesty. Stop them. Stop them? Not for a ton of diamonds, chuckled the king. Why, I'll be the mightiest man they, that ever lived. Just think of it. Tomorrow I'm going to have Ooglek. It took Bartholomew a long time to get uh, the excited king to sleep that night, but there was no sleep for Bartholomew the page boy. All night long he stood in the king's window staring out the majestic mountain Nika cave. Somewhere up there Bartholomew knew the magicians were working their terrible magic. So here they are working. All night the magicians did all night magicians they walked circles around their magic fire making magic mumblings with their clucking tongues oh snow and rain are not enough oh we must make some brand new stuff so feed the fire with wet mouse hair burn an onion burn a chair burn a whisker from your chin and burn a long sour lizard skin Burn yellow twigs and burn red rust and burn a stocking full of dust. Make magic smoke green, thick, and hot. It sure smells dreadful, does it not? That means the smoke is now just right, so quick before the day gets light. Go magic smoke, go high, go high, go rise in the kingdom sky. Go make the oobleck tumble down on every street and every town. Go make the wondrous Ooblek fall. Oh, bring down the Ooblek on us all. Do you think you're going to want that? Dawn was just breaking and Bartholomew was still standing, trembling, watching at the bedchamber window. But now as the sun rose, Bartholomew smiled. Those silly magicians hadn't done a thing. Then suddenly Bartholomew Cuban stopped smiling. Was he seeing things? No. There was something strange up in the sky. At first it seemed like a little greenish cloud, just a wisp of greenish steam. 
but now it was coming lower, closer down toward the field and farms and houses of the sleeping little kingdom. It was swirling around the topmost tur turrets of the palace. Tiny little greenish specks were shimmering in the air right over his head. Funny little greenish blobs just about the size of grape seeds. He stretched out his hand. He started to catch one. Then he pulled his hand back. There was something frightening about those blobs. Bartholomew slammed the window shut. Wake up, your majesty, he shouted. Your oobleck, it's falling. So green oobleck falling from the sky. The king sprang out of his royal bed sheets. By my royal whiskers it is. Oh, that beautiful oobleck, and it's all mine, all mine. I don't like the looks of those blobs, sire, said Bartholomew. They're coming down now as big as greenish peanuts. The bigger the better, laughed the king. Oh, what a day. I'm going to make it a holiday. I want every man, woman, and child in my kingdom to go out and dance in my glorious oobleck. Out in that stuff, asked Bartholomew. Do you really think it's safe, sire? Stop asking your foolish questions, snapped the king. Boy, you run to my royal bell tower. Wake my royal bell ringer. Tell him to ring the great holiday bell. For a moment, Bartholomew Cubans couldn't move. Run, barked the king, and Bartholomew ran. Across the sleeping palace, Bartholomew ran, then up the ladder on the high bell tower. He climbed to the bell ringer's little cubby hole in the bell fire. Ring your bell, he called. His Majesty the King proclaims today a holiday. The old man crawled out of his cot. He grabbed the bell rope. What's the holiday for, Bartholomew? You'll find out soon enough, said Bartholomew. The bell ringer yanked the rope. Nothing happened. He yanked it harder. Still nothing happened. Eh? What's wrong with my bell? He murmured. I'd better take a look outside. He poked his head out through the little trap door. What is he going to see? Merciful gracious, he gulped. What is that? Uh, all over my bell, like greenish molasses. Not only your bell, Bartholomew cried. Look at that poor robin down there in this tree. She's stuck in her nest. She can't move. A wing. That oobleck gooey. It's gummy. It's like glue. Oh, the bell ringer wrung his hands. If that green stuff sticks up robins, it'll stick up people, too. Someone's got to warn the people, cried Bartholomew. Got to wake them and warn them to stay inside their houses. I'll tell the royal trumpeter, he shouted. He turned and he slid like lightning down the bell tower ladder. To the trumpeter's tower raced Bartholomew Cubans and on up the steps, four stairs at a time. As he ran, he could hear the plop of the oobleck on the window panes. It was pelting against the palace walls as big as greenish cupcakes now. He yanked the covers over the snoring trumpeter. He showed his cold trumpet uh, right into his sleeping hands. Get up! Warn the people! Blow the alarm! Alarm! yawned the trumpeter. Then his eyes saw the oobleck. Those green things, Bartholomew. Where'd they come from? The king, panted Bartholomew. His royal magicians made them. The royal trumpeter leapt from his bed. That king of ours should be ashamed. He jabbed his trumpet out of the window. All blow, he shouted, the loudest alarm that's ever been heard in the kingdom of Did. But all the royal trumpeter blew was a gluh. <laughs> My horn! One of those green things flew inside it. He tried to blow it out. He couldn't blow it out. He tried to shake it out. He couldn't shake it out. It'll, I'll get it somehow, he yelled. I'll pull it out. No, don't touch it. 
The trumpeter's hand was already in it. His fingers grabbed hold of a lump of oobleck. He could feel it squiggle around in his fist like a slippery potato dumpling made of rubber. He pulled with all his might. The oobleck began to stretch. Then, cling! The oobleck snapped back inside the trumpet. It yanked his arm back with it right up to his elbow. I can't wiggle a finger, the trumpeter wailed. Oh, Bartholomew, what'll I do? I don't know, and I hate to leave you stuck in your horn, but if you can't warn the people of the kingdom, I've got to find someone who can. Out of the room and down the stairs raced Bartholomew Cubans. Down to the chamber of the captain of guards, the captain was humming in front of his mirror, combing the ends of his handsome mustache. Captain, do something, shouted Bartholomew. Do something? Why? smiled the captain. Can you see him? Uh, captain, haven't you seen the dreadful oobleck? It's coming down now as big as greenish baseballs. Oh, that stuff... Uh, laughed the captain. What's so dreadful about that? You know, I think it's rather pretty. Captain, it's dangerous. Nonsense, said the captain. Lad, you are trying to frighten me. Captains, my boy, are afraid of nothing. That stuff's harmless, I'll show you. I'll eat some. Uh-oh, eat some? Oh, no. But before Bartholomew could stop him, the captain was leaping out his window, scooping up some oobleck on the end of his sword. Don't, Captain, don't! The captain did. By the time Bartholomew dragged him back inside, his mouth was glued tight shut uh, with oobleck. He tried to speak, but no words came out. All the noble captain of the guards could do was blow a lot of sticky greenish bubbles. Oh no!